Our task today is to make a chicken twerk. Why? Because really important reasons? Obviously not a ridiculous idea at all. No, it's important. Very important. Twerking is a butt shaking dance. I checked out the Wikipedia. There's this nice definition there. Knowledge is power, people. Ooh, pictures. There's some good reference. Okay, back to work. Guess what, chicken butt? We need a chicken butt. Here's my chicken sketch. And I already did a character rotation for my chicken. It's in this symbol, see? Ooh, rotation-y. If you want to know how I make a character rotation, I made a video on it. I put a link in the video description. Let's see, I need her butt. And that's frame 13. So in the properties here, we'll set it to single frame and frame 13. Ta-da, a butt. I'm going to just trace the body and make it a symbol. And on different layers, I'm going to trace the wings and the tail and the leg mound things and quickly throw on some color. I'm not going to do the head, legs, or feet in the symbol because they are going to move independently from the butt. I want the butt to shake in a circular motion, so I'll just change my rotation to frame 14 and trace that. I need to make a separate layer for the other wing because it goes behind the body. Doop, 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 and color. Do a little flip for the other side. And I think we need an in-between for this to be a bit more smooth. So I'll just squish this wing so it goes between the two frames. I have the onion skinning on so I can tell where the wing is on the other frames. Squishing it isn't gonna work for the other side, so I'm just gonna draw something. Now for the tail. I'm just gonna move it over for the in-between. There. Now we have a side-to-side -side motion, but we want a circular motion, so I'm just gonna make an arc with the tail. Move these frames up. You can see the arc in the onion skinning. I'm gonna need more frames, so I'm just gonna copy the center frame and put it over here in the center from the right frame. And I need a few extra of the right frames just to get around the circle. I'm just gonna move each of the frames of the tail to continue the circle. I'm skewing and rotating some of the frames just to make it look a little more natural. I'm gonna squish these ones at the bottom because they would be foreshortened. Oh, let's also tilt some of these back so it looks like the tail is getting dragged through the air by the butt. Just gonna keep going and do the other side. Now the wings. The wings are gonna tilt towards the tail. I want the part by the front of the body to stay where it is and the back is going to track with the tail. Just keep the onions getting on so we can make sure it flows from frame to frame. Cool. Okay, let's get out of the symbol and have fun with it. Let's make a tween here. The beginning and end should stay the same. And I'm gonna grab the butt when it's in the down position and we're gonna squash it and stretch it and move it down a bit. Let's watch it play. <laughs> Wonderful. Time to draw the head. I changed my character turnaround to the left facing profile or frame one. And I'm just tracing the head, the eye, the comb, the waddle, and the beak. And color that in. I'm gonna close the beak. Now I'm just moving the head to where it looks good. And we can check that twerking reference from Wikipedia. Yeah, that's the pose. I'm actually not gonna move the head at all because of this fun science fact. Check. 
Chickens and some other birds don't have the ability to move their eyes. So in order to see things clearly while they're moving, their vestibulo-ocular reflex triggers muscles in their neck to keep its head perfectly in the same place despite body movement. If it needs to move its head, it will move it very quickly to the next position and hold it there. That's why chickens, pigeons, cranes, magpies, quails, and other birds bob their heads while they walk. So the head stays put and I'm just connecting it to the body with the neck. Just doing all the frames trying to make it look like it's attached at the same point, and also trying to make it look natural. Then I'm gonna add some color. Time to do the feet. I'm gonna change my rotation back to frame 13. The feet aren't going to move, so I'm gonna draw them on their own layer and color them. And now I connect them to the body with the legs. The body goes up and down a bit, so the chicken is going to bend her legs. I do the extremes first, completely straight and completely bent. Then I in between the rest. And add color. Let's watch her in action. Nice. Okay, let's make this twice as long and just copy and paste the animation from the body and the legs. And we're going to move the head for the second butt rotation. So the head kind of has two positions in beat with the body. I'm going to draw a smear for the head. In general, you only want to add a smear when something's moving really fast. And it's like the frame is a blur. Just make sure to maintain any arcs. You are showing the motion, not just stretching the frame. Let's quickly talk about inertia. An object at rest wants to stay at rest, so floppy bits like the comb and the waddle are going to want to stay in their original positions. They will pull against the motion of the chicken head. But that's not all. An object in motion wants to stay in motion, so when the head suddenly stops, the comb and the waddle want to keep going, so they pull forward. Having an understanding of physics is really important to animation. Do the neck for this new position and color it and then the smear for the other direction this time the comb and the waddle pull in the opposite direction so we can't just use the same frame but for the other two frames i'm just going to copy them and reverse their order so this time it pulls forward then back let's watch it Oh yeah, shake that booty. Now that the animation is done, let's add shadows. I'm pulling the color again from the handy dandy sketch. It's nice whenever something is in a symbol, because you can just change it in the symbol once, and it will change everywhere that symbol appears. Other things like the neck here is more tedious. I have to add a bunch of frames for the body. The shape wasn't changing for the body, so I didn't originally have extra frames, but the shadows do, so I'm just adding those in. Add some shadows to the tail. I change my brush settings to either paint inside or paint selection when I want to paint inside an existing fill. And finally, I'll just add these neck details. I'll just tween them around. Are you ready for this? Ooh, that's a sexy chicken. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a comment or press the like button. I got some more videos in the oven cooking, so subscribe when you'd like to see them when they're hot and toasty, fresh from the oven. They possibly taste better on your ears and eyeballs when they are fresh. I haven't tested this theory. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!